Yeah. Yo. How's it going down there? Just scrubbing the hole. Then we got a little bit more speed on the Pacific Crossing. So meeting again the guys from Siegel Jungs from Maria. Having one nice farewell party today and then we go direct other different directions. Huh? So don't hit it. goodbye to our uh, friends here in Las Perlas uh, with a big farewell and uh, yeah and off we go to the Pacific Ocean yeah to an unknown destination 4,000 miles only my captain my boat and me and maybe a few fish and maybe some whales around we really hope for it's unimaginable. You can't really describe the feeling, eh, Ilya? Uh, it's Five so... to six weeks at sea. The Atlantic crossing <laughs> was a walk in the park, huh? Against, yeah. <laughs> against that. Yeah. So we've made it through the first night, leaving uh, Las Perlas, uh, Pedro Gonzalez Island. And I must say the first night was a very rough night. Um, <clears throat> we had to motor all the way, around 60 miles, to get out of this bite of uh, Panama. Surrounded by lots of squalls, lots of lightning and thunder. It was quite frightening because our autopilot broke down and then we had to hand steer the whole time and that in the rain i got really cold first time i was freezing again because i was so wet what was pretty magical though was we had the strongest bioluminescence ever i never thought this was even possible we had a dolphin visit and the dolphin i first didn't know what it was because it was like a huge white snake approaching the boat like a torpedo and then it vanished under the keel and um, then i went up front and had a look and um, what you could see it was a, an animal maybe three and a half meters long. Because it was pitch black, you couldn't really see the animals, but what you could see through the bioluminescence was the outlines. So um, it looked like a huge disco ball um, just dancing in front of our bow. I've never seen something like that before. It was so, so amazing and so unreal. And the next thing that happened this morning, I was still sleeping and at 7 o'clock Ilya said, Yana, Yana, come outside. And what happened was that right next to our boat, there were sharks jumping vertically into the water and snacking birds or something. This is the first, <laughs> first time we see sharks and we didn't know they would jump up so high. So we're sailing uh, close haul, but if you have a look at the map here, iPad you see it we are not doing a lot of speed but can't motor all the way we just have to get out of here until we finally catch better winds Man, this is here fishing. Fishing business here. Caught a 
flying fish. In the cockpit, eh? Luckily. In the cockpit and the, our um, char battery charger is not charging the batteries anymore. Mm. Yeah. I don't know why, but something, something is wrong there. Luckily, it was only a wire connection that had come loose. Fourth day at sea, 12 o'clock at night. We're still checking out of the bay, the bay of uh, Panama. It's showering, massive rain coming down. Really rocky night. When I switch off the light, unfortunately you can't see it. The bioluminescence of the water is really, really strong, so you can even see the wave, the, the raindrops on the water, so all the water is uh, it's light up. So this is the aftermath of last night. Last night the wind gusts got really bad, and uh, afterwards, of course, that's what always happens. A sea builds up. You can't, maybe you can't really see it on camera, but um, it's really the water is not very calm. Waves going into several directions, and we're just being thrown up and down all the time. And uh, we've got lots of showers uh, over the deck. Chula was groaning quite a bit, but she did a good job. Nothing happened. We did a rig check this morning. All is fine. Morning day five. We made 10 miles last night drifting and we have still snow, no wind. Pretty well, huh? Well, Your partner did the job out here. Day seven. How's it going, Ilya? Day seven, let's see. We're still sailing against the wind, close hole for seven days now. Four, six at the moment. And we sailed maybe 400 miles since we left Panama. Still 3,500 miles to go.
In the Gulf of Panama, current setups are quite tricky and constantly change since the Humboldt current and the equatorial countercurrent, which lets you drift with 2.5 knots towards the east into the Gulf, meet here. The influence of trade winds causes the ocean currents in these tropical regions to flow westward across the Pacific, forming the north and south equatorial currents. Furthermore, this area is influenced by the intertropical convergence zone, where the northeast and southeast trade winds converge. The area is marked by extensive clouds and rain squalls, which you saw us battling with. There's a tired buoy up there, and we decided that our mast stop is a good place for that. <laughs> I don't think so. Pacific Crossing, day 10. We woke up today morning and figure out we have a small rip up in the sail. It was a little bit windy today night. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change, uh, put down the jib, put the storm jib on, and then sew the, the crank and then change the sails again. I got a hole in my sail. Da -da 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 -da. Big hole in my sail. You didn't know why it's broken? Yes, because this is not really made for for the furler. And uh, anytime you you reef the sail with a furling system, um, gets more tension on the edge points, and then it breaks. So today for dinner is uh, calzone time with uh, our last um, tomatoes and some mushrooms and some ham, some cheese. Then we finally reached the trade wind area just northwest of Galapagos with relatively stable southeasterly winds and a 1.5 knot strong current taking us southwestwards. Once again we had passed a stunning island archipelago we would have loved to stop at, but due to the fact that it was not open for boats due to corona and would cost us around $2000 to fulfill all the regularities to enter this nature reserve, we passed the islands to our port side.
by as smooth as it can be. We sailed around 150 miles today with a strong current and we hopefully have a fish back there. Oh, you have to put it here. You must have the things to give. So Elias had the dream of always catching a big, big tuna. And I always smile at him. His little lure. <laughs> no, I got one. four kilogram only finest fillet sushi quality pay a lot of money in Germany for that fish so looking forward to have some sushi tomorrow I am Neptune the ruler of the seven seas we are for us sailing 7,500 miles from Germany to cross here in the Pacific, the equator. You are initiated into Neptune's corps of brave seamen who reach that goal. To illustrate this, you are marked today by me with a tattoo of a shellback turtle. To show that you belong to this unique seaman who crossed the middle line of the earth. For this, have a zip of this unique drink. <laughs> one for you, one for the Neptune. To clear my senses? To clear your senses. This is very fun. <laughs> One for the king of the seas. <laughs> okay. over, the, over the shoulder. Over the shoulder and now the shell back, shell back turtle. Now you are a real seaman. <laughs> I was a real seaman before. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. It's cat food day today. made something special with the tuna. I don't know what he did, but he maybe explains himself. You put a nice piece of tuna in salt and just leave it for two days and then you got salted fish. Normally if you put a little bit, smoke it a little bit first, a bit more nicer, but this is, this is delicious. I must say I can Maybe I don't have a taste for this or I'm missing the taste part on my, my tongue but I feel I would rather eat a can of cat food before eating this. We are 600 nautical miles away from Galapagos about. I don't know what this is. I think, I think it's um, from Chile maybe or off from Ecuador or whatever. I don't know. 
flag the fishers use to mark where they put down their nets. Yeah, I think Mr. Norman has to find out what it is. Ja, das wird ein Fischernetz. Nein, das abgerissen ist. Ihr lasst es einfach nur eine Fahne. We just almost ran over um, two canisters swimming here around, which are probably connected to the net. So pretty glad we have a long keel um, with a rudder that protects our propeller. In the aftermath, we weren't really sure whether that had maybe been a drifting net with the GPS sender, as we saw two big sailing trawlers in the far distance the next few days, and the floating flags had not looked weathered but in very good shape and color. For a whole week it has been like this now. Every night the wind dies and the sail starts slapping. We had to take down the main sail and uh, can't get any sleep when it was off shift because it's so loud downstairs. We just have to drift. So this is the course we're supposed to go and this is the course that we I went during the last hours and you can see our speed, 2.5 knots maybe, at least a little bit in the right direction, but this is getting pretty tiring if you have a look at the days and we are already three weeks at sea and have not even made 2,000 miles. Today, catch of the day is Mahi Mahi. So, not a big one, but enough for two people for lunch. This is how quickly it changes its color. First it's blue and green, as you just saw outside, and now it turns silver. Our generator flew apart a starter motor. Because somehow stacked, and this is what is what is left from the starter motor for the, from the, this hang crank thing so what I gotta do, I have this plate this one goes here this one goes here, then I put a rope over here and then I try to pull it Did this, this metal coil, did it get into the motor or not? Yeah, that was a problem, so it might be damaged, but hopefully not would you recommend this uh, generator, Ilya? <laughs> no, this is... Uh, you have a saying in German. The billig kauf kauf doppelt. So if you buy cheap, then you buy it twice. Everything is connected with each other and you can't really take anything apart, huh? Yeah, this is made for... If it's broken, then you have to throw it away. Let's prove different, huh, Ilya? Not with me. <laughs> Ich muss es in diese Richtung ziehen, aber ich kann es ja in diese aufwickeln. Wie ich auch immer sehe, dass ein kleines Scharnier vorsetzen kann, wo man das einfach so, so okay. aufmachen kann. Ja. So eine kleine Schnalle. Hallo. <lacht> On. Let's try with choke. So, where's the open heart operation here? Okay, let's hope for the best. On, on, on. But he's not doing it as usual, huh? No. And it says something red in here? Red lamp? So, right. Second try. Now it's running how it should. So we have here output. 
So these are the fillets of the mahi and yeah. And I am thinking of making some meatballs. This is the egg test. It's not coming to the surface, meaning the egg is still fine. This is our saw called in German Fleischwolf, the meat wolf that eats up the meat and makes it small. Our boom folded where it connects to the vang, so we have jerry rigged it with our bamboo pole. It seemed to be holding so far and we are still making good. Cheers to Paul and Lily. Woof woof. So it's a Pacific Crossing day 20... Must be something like 21 or 22. And uh, we are checking every three or four days. We are checking our email inbox and there are a couple of yards transiting with us. Um, and uh, they're writing us how things are going. So having a satellite phone on board is really nice thing so we have still 1700 miles to go and uh, hopefully we will be there in about two weeks we caught a lot of fish so stop fishing for the moment because our fridge is full of tuna and I salted some fish there's still a little bit left over some salted tuna um, yeah, not I do not really like it, but uh, but I do. <laughs> I I suppose this is a kind of Lithuanian thing to have uh, raw salted fish. I don't know. It's in a time, and this is what our meatballs look like. The Mai Mai meatballs. If you are still on crab food diet, I just don't like it. But I must say. It's probably pretty good. Last night we had the last few fronts coming over us with 30 to 37 knots. Um, just uh, took the mainsail down. And uh, had a very small part of the Genoa out and yesterday we didn't really film anything but yesterday we had a special day here yesterday was the day we are one year since we left Kiel one year on Tula one year living on Tula About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be, life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we waited for Take my hand, we'll make it somehow We can't miss out I'm done living life with the lights out Die with my own doubts Be free
1,000 miles from Nukuhiba and um, we've got some visitors today, some dolphins that came around. It's a part of maybe 50, 60 animals, maybe more. And uh, they've been around here for 45 minutes and playing around, jumping around, a massive show. It's so cool. Every time you see them, it just makes you happy. They're just so graceful. We have these ones that you have here. Some are gray and some are spotted gray. I think we're a little bit too slow for them. Uh, they keep on going back into the wave and then speeding up and then uh, swimming a while in front of our bow and then uh, going back doing the whole game again. helicopter midden in the Pacific Ocean. They had a Panama flag on, on a helicopter, but I don't know where they come from. I mean, the nearest land from here is like 1,500 miles. So maybe some from, from some, some ship or something. Because this helicopter do not look like gonna... But he could land on water. He could land on water. Yeah. So there is no island, nothing here in between. It was only after our arrival at the Marquesas that a friend of ours who is a helicopter pilot told us that it's common for big offshore fishing vessels to use these to spot tuna swarms. The military uniform did confuse us after all though. and uh, two lights so it's more than 50 meters long yes now spotted us wondering when we caught this mahi our whole cockpit is full of this and what we found behind one of the seats here um, is I guess the rest of a flying fish that he may have puked out when we caught him hmm yummy it's it looks like a male or female Ilya you know I don't I don't know um, I forgot but I don't know but I read um, they are really fast hunters they reach a speed of 65 kilometers per hour uh, when they're hunting and um, yeah this is a quite big one so it's pretty heavy I think it's a like seven kilogram or something so um, today we're gonna eat fish and then I will continue my fish drying business Still 28 miles away from the island, but you can 
see the big white cloud hovering above it. Oh, six hours and we're there. 3,900 miles. Thanks for joining us on our 4,000 mile adventure across the seemingly never-ending Pacific. Putting 40 days into one video was quite a challenge. We hope you enjoyed this long journey. Let us know by subscribing on our channel and becoming part of our Patreon crew who make our sailing videos possible for you.